Okay, everybody, can you start your video? Okay, we're going to start the lesson now. Okay, so let's turn on the video. And uh, okay, now this paper is a very good paper. Uh, yeah, all right, I, I think it's a good standard. Okay. So yeah. if you, uh, you, you won't find the paper quite hard, but also not quite easy. So I think it's a quite a good paper. So I hope you have done the paper already, all right? This paper one. Uh, so it's a very good, I mean, it's not like this paper because it's, uh, it's a very good variety. There's a very, there's a variety of questions that are easy, medium, and also a little bit hard. Okay, so let's look at question one, okay? Everybody can hear my voice clearly, everybody? Okay, when we're gonna start your video, Wenrei, Jordan, and uh, Li Wen, and also for Wenrei, just to let you know that uh, you can come for lesson face-to-face, -face, right, every week already. All right, so make sure you come physically every lesson, okay? And all right, so Jordan and Li Wen, start your video, and okay, so we, we still have some more, uh, some more students coming. Okay, so let's start, all right, question one, all right, question one, and okay, let's start already. Okay, so what is a star? You have to work backwards. So uh, the first one is uh, not that hard. So you divide. So when you work backwards, 500 divide by 20. So the times become uh, divide. So how do you divide? You cancel, take out one zero and take out one zero, and then 50 divide by two, and you will get 25. So your answer is number four. All right. Okay, make sure everybody can see, uh, the, the voice is clear. All right, Yvette, your camera a bit lower, your camera. Okay, number two, 19.09 kilogram is how many kg and grams? Now, you need to change the kilogram into grams first. So how do you change into grams? You have to multiply by 1,000. You take 19.09 and you times 1,000, okay? And you shift the decimal point to the right three times. All right, so like this, one, two, and three. And then you put the zero in the empty basket and above the arrowhead, there's a decimal point and then there's a zero. So after you multiply by 1000, you will get 19090 grams. Okay, then you break up into kilogram and grams. So how many kilograms? That will be 19,000 grams or 19 kilogram. And what's the balance? The balance will be 90 grams. Okay, so you have 19 kilograms and 90 grams. So answer number three. Clear so far? All right, anything you're not sure, I think uh, Amisa can allow some time to answer some questions. All right, maybe one or two questions. Okay, now let's look at number three. How do you round off to two decimal places? Uh, okay, so you will need to draw a line. Okay, draw a line to show how a two decimal place look like, like this. Okay, so this is how a two decimal place look like. And look at the digit nearest the line. Is it five or bigger? No, it's not. So you don't add one. So it will still be the same, right? So you don't add one on the next digit. So you will get 2.83, which is your two decimal place. Okay, clear so far? All right, okay, instant start your video. Okay, let's go to number four. All right, anyone need to check? Anyone who come in later and you, you need to check the earlier answers. All right, question one, the answer is four. Uh, question two, answer is three. And then question three, the answer is two. And okay, All right. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, question number four. Okay, what do we have? Uh, okay, there is a minus there. So four over seven and you minus one third. So you have to make the denominator the same, times three and then the one times seven, right? So make sure you times three on top and above and then times seven on top and above. And you will get 12 over 21 minus seven over 21 and you will get five, all right, five over 21. So your answer is number three. Okay, not that hard. Okay, let's go to number five. How do you arrange the, the numbers from smallest to the largest? Okay, now you cannot compare these three numbers because why? Uh, because they are different. There's a whole number, there's a decimal. So you will need to change the whole number into a decimal, okay? And you still cannot compare because there are different decimal places. So you will need to add one more zero and here also one more zero. So now you can see that you can compare already. So what is the smallest number, which is your 8.00? All right, and then the second, the, the getting bigger will be what? Getting bigger will be 8.07, and the biggest will be 8.70, right? So your answer will be number one. Okay, number one. So lesson here, you have to change the whole number into a decimal, and then make all the decimal to have the same decimal places. Then you can compare, all right? Otherwise, you cannot compare. It's very hard to compare. Okay, let's go to number six. Now, which of the following will be the most likely mass of a laptop? Now, it cannot be 20 grams. 20 grams is, uh, is the weight of your coins or your 10 cent coin. No, it's very light, your 30 cent coins. So it cannot be so light. 
it cannot be 20 kilogram because that's very heavy, all right? Uh, that is the weight of a little boy. Okay, a little boy. <laughs> all right, maybe, maybe some of you weigh 20 kilogram, which I don't think so, all right? Maybe a toddler, okay, a toddler, 20 kilogram. Uh, it cannot be 200 grams because why? Because 200 grams is the mass of a loaf of bread. No bread. When you, when you go and buy bread, a loaf of bread, it is actually quite light. Okay, quite light. But if you carry your laptop, right, you, you lift up your laptop, you'll find that it's much heavier than a loaf of bread. So what is the mass of the laptop? It's about two kilograms. Okay, two kilograms is the correct mass. Okay, right, not 200 grams. 200 grams is the, is the mass of a loaf of bread. Very light, okay, it's, it's still quite light. Okay, let's go to number seven. Okay, now, A, B, and C, D are straight lines. Okay, one ray, yeah, one ray, raise hand. Yeah, but uh, question six can answer the two. Question six can also be what? Two. Uh, can you see clearly? I mean, I can't really hear you. Three, three, three. Oh, cannot be three, cannot. <laughs> you know, what is 20 kilogram? 20 kilogram is the mass of what? Uh, a boy, a small boy, all right? A small, no, it's a kindergarten boy. <laughs> okay, your, your laptop is not so heavy. Cannot be 20 kilogram, okay? So it's out already. 20 kilogram is the heaviest out already, okay? All right, so let's go to number seven. Okay, your A, B, and C, D are straight lines. So look out for straight lines because there's an X there. So is M equal to an, is angle M equal to angle N? Uh, nope, not uh. These two angles are not the same uh, because you don't have two lines cross each other. Can you see that? Uh, can you see this line? This line and this line, they are not straight. So your angle M is not equal to angle N. So which are the two angles that are, which are the two angles that will be equal? Very easy. You just look at the two red lines. Okay, let me show you. And in between the two red lines, you have two angles, right? So angle R is equal to angle S. Isn't that number four? Right, angle R is equal to angle S. So look, look for two, two uh, look for two lines that cross each other, and then look for the angles between them, right? Between them, they are equal. So answer number four. Okay, let's go to number eight. Uh, Esther bought seven over nine of a pizza, and she ate three fifth of it, right? Of it. So how much of the pizza has she eaten? So what do you do? Uh, you take three fifth of. Remember what we did last time. Three fifth of is times. And what is it? It refers to the to the pizza that she bought. So you take three over five times seven over nine. All right. And can you cancel? Uh, so what do you do? You divide by three and nine divide by three. And then cannot cancel already. So one times seven is seven. And then five times three will be 15. So how much of the pizza has she eaten? So there'll be seven over 15. Clear? All right. Okay, any questions so far? No question? All right, let's move on. All right, question nine. Okay, next page. Uh, City mix some lemon eight drink by mixing the lemon syrup with water in the ratio one is to three. And she made 12 liters of the lemonade drink. So how much water did she use? Now, some of you are stuck because you didn't have something like this. You have the syrup with the water, right? But you are stuck. Why are you stuck? Because you put one is a three and you don't know how to continue. When you use ratio method, there is a total. What is the total? The total is the mixture or the lemonade, the lemonade, okay, the lemonade. The drink, okay, the, the lemonade drink that you that you mix together, right? So you must have a total in your ratio. Otherwise, you cannot solve. Okay, when you use ratio method, you always have a have a total there. And she made 12 liters of the lemonade drink. So how much water did she use? Which is the question mark here. So you can see that your four units is 12 liter. Then your one unit must be 12 divided by four. So the water is three units. So three times three, that'll be nine liters. So she must have used nine liters of water. Okay, so lesson here, if you're using ratio, you will need to have a total, a total in your ratio. Okay, question 10. The figure is made of a semicircle and a quarter circle of radius 7 cm. So what's the parameter of the figure? Ah, parameter means you have to add all the lines that you see. Let's find the circumference of this semicircle. And what's the radius of this semicircle, which is seven, right, seven. And there's a seven here also. So before you do anything, write the formula. You want to find semicircle, so put the half in front. And what's the formula to use? Pi D, not pi R square, but pi D. So what's your pi? Your pi is 
22 over 7. And what's your diameter? Diameter is the line that cuts the circle into half. This is the diameter. Okay, the diameter that you see. It's a line that cuts the circle into half and 14. All right, no calculator. So what do you do? You change the whole number into a fraction. And then you do cancel, cancel. All right, without calculator. So divide by 2 and divide by 2, right? And then 7 divided by 7, and then 14 divided by 7. Okay, once you cannot cancel already, then you circle, right? Circle the numbers you cannot cancel. You will get 22 and circle the denominators, and you will get 1. So what's the circumference of the semicircle? The circumference of the semicircle is 22 cm. And then what do you do? Can you find the circumference of this quadrant? So you don't need to, you don't need to do... Uh, a lot of steps, you just take the circumference of the semicircle and divide by two, right? Because why? Because a semicircle is made of two quadrants. Okay, so just divide by two. Okay, then how many straight lines do you see? One, two, three, and four. So there are four straight lines, which is how many? So you take four times seven. So four times seven will be 28, right? And then plus the circumference of the quadrant and plus the circumference of the semicircle, and you will get the parameter of the figure, which is 61 cm. So answer number three. Do you understand? Okay, all right, let's go on to question 11. Okay, question 11, and the cost of a shirt was twice the cost of a pair of pants. The pair of pants was n cost n dollars. Mr. Samad bought three pairs of pants and a shirt. He gave the cashier hundred dollars. So, which of the expression shows the change that he received? Okay, what do you do? You can draw model. Okay, why draw model? Because there's a twice as many. So, if you don't know how to do, okay, by by the way, just to let you know that because you have done quite a lot of algebra problems already, right? So, the next. Paper one that you do, you need to try to do the algebra questions. No more skipping already. <laughs> okay, don't skip anymore already, right? You should be able to do the algebra problems. Okay, so you draw a model. The shirt costs two times or twice as much as the pair of pants, right? Something like that. And the pair of pants costs N. Instead of calling one unit, you just put the letter N inside and the shirt will be 2N, right? Shirt is 2N. And Mr. Ahmad, Mr. Samad bought three pairs of pants. So you just stack down, stacking model, right? This is called a stacking model. So you have three pairs of pants. And so what's the total cost? What, how much did she spend all together? So she must have spent $5N dollars. Okay, $5N dollars. And then she gave the cashier $100. So what is the change? So you take the money that you give the cashier and you minus 5N and you will get the change, which is 100 minus 5n. So your answer is number three. Okay, so model, right? You can have a simple model. Okay, number 12. Now in the diagram, ACD is an equilateral triangle. So when you see equilateral triangle, what do you do? It means that all sides are equal and there's a 60, 60, and also 60, and you need to do one more thing. Put the markings to show all the sides are equal. And BC is equal to AC. So you have an isosceles triangle, right? So what is angle CAB, which is over here? So how do you find the angle? Now, if you notice carefully, this is your isosceles triangle. So which two angles are the same? The angles that are the angles at the end of the two sides, right? Where are the angles that are at the end of the two equal sides? This angle, I mean, this side is equal, right? So the angle at this end, and this side is also equal, right? So the angle at this end, so they'll be equal. So the two angles that you see, they are equal. So can I find what's the angle here, which is one, two, zero? Okay, let me just try a bit nicely. So how do you get one, two, zero? Angle on a straight line, minus 60, you get one, two, zero. Then you take 180, which is sum of angles in the isosceles triangle, minus one, two, zero, and you will get 60. Right, so these two angles that you see will be 60, right? Then you just have to divide by 2 to get 30 and 30 because it's an isosceles triangle. So your answer is number 1. Okay, all right. Okay, okay, Rafael, are you looking at the camera or what? Rafael, your, your face is like sideways. Huh? Okay, let's go to number 13. Okay, number 13. Okay, number 13 and let's move on. Okay, hang on. Okay, during a sale, the price of the blouse was sold at $40. 
And be careful, this is a sale. So it cannot be 100% is $40, cannot be. 100% means the original price. And this, okay, this was 20% less than the usual price, which is 100%. So how many percent do you pay during the sale? That must be 100 minus 20. You must have paid 80% during the sale. So that 80% during the sale is also $40, right? So can you find the price of the blouse before the sale, which is your original price? Okay, your original price is the price at first, which is 100%. So jumping, okay, jumping method, can you divide by 20 to get four, right? And then after that, what do you do? You times 25, all right? You can do some jumping, right? There are, there are different ways to jump, all right? You can jump like that, or you can also jump a, jump differently also, right? So over here, you jump, divide by 20, and you get $2, right? And then later, you times 25 as well, and you will get uh, 50, right? $50. So what was the usual price before the sale? $50, <clears throat> okay? All right. Okay, let's go on. If you need to copy down, uh, you can watch the video, right? The video is the lesson is recorded, so you can watch the video to catch up on the writing. Now there were twice as many girls as boys, so the girls has two times, the boys have one time. Fifteen girls left the club, and ten boys joined the club, and there was an equal number of boys and girls in the club. So how many boys and girls were there at first? What's the method here? When it gets hard, model drawing. I hope you have done your model. You, you try to draw the model. Oh yeah, Karina, question Karina. Um, I think you are too fast. Sorry? See, I, think, uh, I think you are too fast. Okay, all right. Okay, everybody, let me have a show of hands. Am I teaching too fast or do you want me to slow down? Okay, who thinks I'm teaching a bit too fast? Then raise your hand. Nobody. Okay, who thinks I'm teaching very slow? <laughs> raise your hand. <laughs> Nobody. Who thinks that I'm teaching uh, normal? Miss normal pace. Raise your hand. Okay, I think most of you normal pace, right? Okay, then Karina, what happened is uh, if it's a bit too fast, <coughs> watch the video. Okay, watch the video to catch up. <coughs> okay, let's continue. Okay, give me a while first. Uh, let me just drink some water, okay? Okay, now if you find the lesson a bit too fast, uh, then just, just look at the video, all right? Look at the video and uh, it will help you to slow down because you can pause the video anytime. Okay, so, the, so what's the matter here? The matter here is to what? To draw the model. Okay, draw the model. So you have girls, draw a rectangle, two boxes, and the boys will be one box. Okay? And 15 girls left the club. So how do you draw the after? So you have the before on top and the after below. Okay, before on top and the after is below. So spend time on the model drawing. Okay, don't rush. So you have 15 girls who left the club something like that okay make sure your rectangles are at the same side all right they must be at the same side or they start at the same side and then you have 10 boys join the club so in the end you have equal right equal number of boys and girls okay so where is your 15 your 15 is where your 15 is over here okay you can do something like that this is your 15 and then this is the the one the 10 boys will join okay right and you can start cutting already right start cutting here 10 right and then here is also 10 can you see what i'm doing right after you draw the model already you can start cutting already and uh and then can you see that this is what this is one unit one unit and over here is of course also one unit right and of course this is your one unit as well one unit all right so can you find how many boys and girls at first which is over here question mark yeah, that's how you draw the model without a lot of thinking, right? You have to learn how to draw all the sentences on your own and then use the model to work out. So you look at the model, one unit is 10 plus 15, 25. So there are three units all together at first. So 25 times three, 25 times three, 75. So there are 75 boys and girls at first. Understand? Okay, the lesson here is for this problem is to be able to draw out the sentence one by one. Okay, all right, question 15, also model drawing because there's a fraction given. So Alice and Weiling shared the cost of a gift. Alice paid two-fifths. What is this fraction talking about? It's talking about the cost 
of the of the present. And she also paid another $36. And Wei Ling paid $54. So how much did the gift cost? All right, quite easy. Look at the fraction. The fraction is talking about the present. So draw a rectangle, which is the cost of the present, cut it into five boxes, and at least paid two boxes plus another $36. Okay, now if you don't know how to cut, okay, Miss I'll show you something. Huh? If you don't know how to, how to label at least because she paid two boxes plus another 36, then what you can do is you can draw a similar rectangle again if you don't know how to label. Cut two boxes here because this is what Alice paid, right? Plus another 36. Okay, so just, just here, maybe something like that. I don't know. Okay, 36. And this is what? This is Alice. Okay, so model is very creative. Huh? One unit, one unit. All these are units, right? So Alice paid two unit plus another 36. Okay, if you don't know how to label, then you have a separate model below. And then you can see more clearly already. And then who paid the rest of the money? So the rest of the money must be Wei Ling. So Wei Ling paid $54, right? So you put $54 inside the box here. Can you solve already? Yeah, can solve. So you look at, you compare the two rectangles. This will be three units. Okay, so your three units is equal to 36 plus 54. Right, 36 plus 54, which is $90, right? Then your one unit will be 90 divided by 3, $30. Then how much is the present, which is the whole rectangle? That will be five units. So five units will be 30 times five. So the cost of the present is $150. So what is the lesson here? The lesson here is you draw the model already. And you, if you don't know how to cut it or don't know how to label, then draw another one below. Okay, draw another one below. And then you can, you can, see, you can see clearly already, left, uh, top and bottom. You can see and compare. Okay, we are done. I think today we can end a bit earlier today. <laughs> okay, we may be able to end earlier. Okay, let's go to question 16. All right, question 16. So far, the questions are quite all right. They are not that uh, very hard, uh, but also not very easy for some of the questions. Okay, what is the length of the pencil? You look at the ending point, 14, right? And uh, this one is 1.5 but you cannot minus whole number with decimal. You have to change the whole number into a decimal before you can minus. So 14.0 minus 1.5. And uh, then what do you do? You borrow and you land. So you have a five and two and one. So what's the length of the pencil? That will be 12.5. And how do you get the length of the pencil? You take the, start, you take the end number, the ending number, minus the starting number. All right, that's how you get the length of the pencil. Okay, Karina? <laughs> All right, if it's a bit too fast, uh, later, watch the video. Okay, watch the video to catch up. All right. Okay, question number 17. Uh, how do you divide the fraction? 7 over 9 divided by 3. All right, first step, change the whole number into a fraction. Okay, then after that, keep change flip. So keep the first fraction, change the divide to times and flip. Okay, flip upside down and you cannot cancel. So what do you do? You just multiply the numerators. Uh, so, true. It's one over three, not one over two. Oh, one over three. Yeah, okay. Missed on right, tran missed on right uh, transfer error. Thanks for telling me. If you see any careless mistake, do tell me. All right, so it's one over three. Huh? Then if you cannot cancel, what do you do? Seven times one, you get seven. If you cannot cancel, then just multiply. Then multiply the denominators, which is uh, nine times three, 27. And your answer will be simplest form. Why is it the simplest form? Because you cannot cancel. That's why you'll be in the simplest form, right? If you are canceling, what does that mean? It means that you are making the fraction simplest form if you are canceling the numbers. Okay, clear so far? Okay, question 18. Uh, this is the one where I think some of you may not know how to do. Okay, some of you put down the answer as 0 0.6, which is still wrong. Why is still wrong? Because when you change the fraction to a decimal, and how do you change it into a fraction? How do you change it into a decimal? Okay, by the way, uh, three FIFA, if you look at three over five, what is the decimal for three over five? You can make the denominator into a 10. So five times two, three times two, six over 10. And that's how you get 0 0.6. But that's not your answer. That is not your answer. Why is it not your answer? Because it is still 0.6%. It is still in percentage. 
right? You did not change it totally into decimal. Your decimal cannot have a symbol, cannot have the percentage symbol. All right, then what do you do? Then change the percentage into a fraction, which is 0 0.6 over 100. Okay, change it into a fraction, which is out of 100. And what is this fraction about? What is it? What is, what is fraction? Fraction means dividing. It means 0 0.6 divided by 100. Okay, and then shift the decimal point to the left. So how do you shift? So 0 0.6, you divide by 100, you shift to the left, 1 and 2. Okay, and uh, put the 0 in the empty basket, arrowhead, decimal point, and 0 in front. So what is your answer after you divide? 0 0.006. And now your answer is a decimal, and there is no percent. Okay, there's no percent inside your decimal. Okay, understand? If you write 0 0.6, it is still 0.6%, right? You did, did not change into decimal yet. You will have to change the percentage totally into decimal. And how do you change totally into decimal? You have to do this. Okay, you have to do all this. Okay, then you can change totally into a decimal. Got it? All right, let's go to question 19. All right, question 19. Okay, now. Mary baked M number of muffins in the morning. In the afternoon, she baked 58 muffins. And then she had 105 muffins in the end. So how many muffins did she bake in the morning? OK, so what do you do? You add the morning, which is M. All right, we don't know how many muffins, but it's M plus the afternoon, which is 58. And add them together, and you will get 105. OK, so how many did she bake in the morning? Then you just work backwards, 105 minus 58. And what do you get? All right, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use my calculator to do a bit faster. 105 minus 58, you will get 47. So what is the value? What is the value of M? M must be 47, All right? OK, so you're asked to find the value of M. What is M? What does M stands for? M stands for 47. OK, so next week onwards, you have to start doing your algebra problems already, including circles, all right, circles as well. All right, so you don't leave the question blank anymore. OK, next one, question 20. Uh, uh, question 20, we skip because there's no picture there. All right, something is missing. All right, the diagram is missing. OK, let's go to question 21. OK, the parameter, parameter of the, of the isosceles triangle is 36 cm. What is isosceles? It means that the two sides are equal. So this is D plus three. So can you find the value of D? What does D stands for? So you will have to add up all the sides. So how do you add up all the sides? You add all the Ds, one, D, two, D, three, D. So there are three Ds and then plus three, six, three plus three, six. So the parameter is three D plus six. And that is equal to what? That is equal to 36 CM. All right, then how do you do? Then you find what is 3D, which is 36 minus 6, and you get 30. Then what is D? D is equal to 30 divided by 3, and that will be 10. All right, 30 divided by 3. So it's like units. Okay, this is something like units. 3 units equal 30. So 1 unit is equal to 10. So your value of D is 10. Are you clear? Clear so far? Okay, everybody all clear. Caleb, any question? All right, Karina, you raise your hand. Any questions? Um, by the way, teacher, how, uh, how could we find the video? Okay, the video is on the... Okay, where, where do you get all these lesson videos? You have to join the Facebook... The, the, what the... Mr. Tong has a Facebook group, right? Facebook group. They go inside. All the videos are there. Okay. I'll, 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 let, I'll, I'll let Karina know later. All right. I will, send, I will let you know later. Okay, let's continue. Okay, question 22. The ratio of Peter's money to John's money is three to five. Peter spent, all right, Peter spent $24. And Peter's money to John's money is three to seven. So how much money did Peter have at first? So again, this is a before and after problem. Then what's your method? Model drawing, right? So, so try not to leave it blank because if it's a before and after model, a uh, before and after problem, then try to draw the model. So the, how do you draw the before model? Peter, Peter is three boxes. John, John is five, okay, five boxes, right? You draw the first sentence already. Peter spent $24, okay, so Peter must have a shorter rectangle, right? 
and uh, who did not spend money. So every time you have before and after problem, you need to ask what is unchanged. Okay, Ms. Song say again, uh, if it's a before and after problem, you need to ask what is unchanged or what is the same. There are four answers, total, unchanged, okay, total unchanged, uh, difference unchanged, difference, one person unchanged, or everything changed. So there are four answers. So you have to choose one of the four answers. So in this problem, what is unchanged? John's money is unchanged. So you, you draw his rectangle first because it's easier to draw. Okay, so the person who is unchanged, the model is very easy to draw. Just draw the same rectangle and you can see that Peter to John's money in the end is three to seven. So you cut John's rectangle into seven. And then Peter will have three. And you can see his rectangle is also shorter. All right, shorter than at first. Yeah, okay. All right, so what do you do next? Then uh, you look at the boxes. And uh, what do you see? You can see John is unchanged. So how to make them equal? There are, you can put seven. Now, why do you put seven units inside? Why? Because if you look at John's in the end, John's in the after model, he has seven boxes. He has seven boxes in the after model. That's why you put seven units inside. <clears throat> and then what do you put inside here? You put five units. Okay, five units. Why five units? Because John has five boxes at first. All right, and then every box here, five units. Can you see what I'm doing? And if you add up all the units, that will be 35 units, unchanged. Okay, unchanged, right? And do the same for the model, okay? The whole model. So this will be seven units. And then the after model will be five units. Okay, can you see that? And then you can compare already. Like what do you compare? You can compare Peter's, Peter, right? Peter's money. Peter has 21 units, and uh, now he has only 15, right? 15 units. So he must have spent how many units? 21 minus 15. So he must have spent six units, which is $24. So how much is one unit? So 64 divided by 24 divided by six, one unit is $4. Do you know how to draw the model? <laughs> your P6 already, so you're expected to know how to draw this model. All right, the P4s, okay, the P4s are doing something like this. So your P6, so you must know how to draw this. Okay, so how much did Peter have at first, which is 21 units. So 21 times 4. So 21 times 4, that'll be $84. Okay, so try to draw this model, all right? It's not very hard to draw. So what's the, it's a before and after problem, but it's unchanged, one person un unchanged. Okay, okay, let's go on to the next question, all right? Let's move on. Okay, question 23. And uh, when you see this question, what is the method here? Grouping, all right? Grouping method. No need to think very hard how to do. So you will need to recognize where your group starts. Your group starts with a one and ends with, uh, ends with uh, another one. Okay, that's one group. And then you have another similar group, repeater group, and then another repeater group. So one group has five digits. So what is the sum of the first 24 digits, which is how many groups inside? You take 24 digits and divide by five to get how many groups, and you will get four groups, and there is a remainder. So what's the remainder? The remainder is four. There's a remainder four. What is remainder four? It means that you have four digits over here that cannot form another group. Okay, the remainder four digits means cannot form another group. So what are they? They are your one, three, one, three. Understand? So can you find the sum of all these digits? So you will need to go back to one group and find the sum. So you have one plus three, four, four plus four, eight plus one, the sum is nine. Okay, there are four groups. So four times nine, 36, but still not the answer yet because you need to add the last four digits, which is eight. Understand? And then you plus them together. So 36 plus eight. So what is the sum of all the 24 digits? Answer 44. Do you understand? Grouping method, grouping method. How do you know that? Picture clues, right? Picture can also give you some clues. So there's a picture here and it's grouping method. Okay, Jared, start your video, Jared. Question 24, grouping, grouping. method. 
Okay, question 24 is grouping method uh, because there's a picture there also, <laughs> right? There's a, no, can you see a picture here? So there is a grouping method already. <laughs> okay, now highlighters are sold in packets of four. Each packet is sold at $8. Tom has $30. What is the maximum highlighters that he can buy? Okay, now if you don't know how to do, then you can do the primary tree, all right? What the primary tree are doing, okay? Nothing wrong to do primary tree way of doing. Primary tree, they are doing this, right? Tom has $30, okay? If you are, if you don't know how to do, you can do something like that. $8, one packet. Okay, another $8. This is also grouping method, right? So how many $8 can you make? Uh, you can make three $8. And what's the leftover? The leftover must be $6. And how do you get $6? You take 30 minus 8 minus 8 minus 8, you get $6. So the $6, can I buy one more packet? I can't, right? So how many packets can I buy? I can only buy three packets. And each packet has how many highlighters? Uh, four highlighters in one packet, another one packet, another one packet. So what is the maximum highlighters that he can buy? So your answer will be 12, right? He can buy a total of 12 highlighters. All right, so this one is grouping method. Okay, let's go on to question 25. Okay, before we continue, any questions so far? All right, we can have some time for some questions. No questions? Oh, Wenrei, any questions? Karina, Caleb? All right, all good? Okay, then let's go on. Okay, let's go on. Okay, let's go to question 25. Yeah, somebody say something. Uh, one rate, yeah. Uh, yeah, still copying. Uh. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll give you one minute to copy. Uh. Okay, hurry, hurry. We still have six more questions to go. Okay, just to let you know that next week, we will have a break. I think we will have a one week break next week. So next week, there'll be, there'll be no session. So the following week, then we continue. All right, Mr. also need to, need, need to rest. <laughs> so next week, we most likely don't have a session, all right? So we will do that after next week. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Question 25. Now, the ratio of the money Sully had to the money ratio had was three to four. Each of them bought a bag, which cost $45. And the ratio of the money Sully had to the money ratio had in the end, that's your before and after problem was three to seven. So how much money did ratio have at first? So this is again a before and after problem. Then your model, okay, your before and after model. All right, so what is unchanged? Okay, let's draw the model first and then you tell me what is unchanged. So you have the before model, right? So you have Sully to ratio and you draw a rectangle, three is to four, okay? All right? And each of them bought a bag or they spent $45 each. So if they spend $45 each, then their money will become lesser. So uh, Sully will have three boxes, which is smaller, right? Something like that. Okay, three, maybe I should write, I should draw even smaller. <laughs> okay, something like that. Three boxes. And then Sully will have seven tiny boxes. Okay, seven, something like that. Seven tiny boxes. Okay, something like that. Okay, so how much money did ratio have at first? Then your question mark will be over here. Okay, all right. Uh, and where do you put the $45? Now, if you don't know how to put the $45, then you don't put in the model. You can leave out the $45 out of your model. Okay, now what is unchanged? Every time you do before and after problems, you must always think about what is unchanged. Four answers again, uh, total unchanged, one person money unchanged, difference unchanged or everything changed. Now they both spend the same equal amount. So the difference is unchanged. Okay, the difference is unchanged because they both spend equal amount. So what do I do? Can you see that there are four units, right? There, there's a difference of four units. Then what I do is I just put four units. Okay, I just put four units there. All right, four units, okay? The difference is unchanged. And then every box here will be four units. Okay. And then below every box will be one unit. So does it become clearer already? So can you now find how many units did each of them spend? So Sully has 12 units at first. And now she only has nine units or three units, right? She only has three units left. So she must have spent how many units? She must have spent nine units. Karina, understand Karina? 
Okay, so Sully must have spent nine units, and uh, Rachel also spent nine units, which is forty-five dollars. Then your one unit will be forty-five divided by nine, so your one unit is five dollars. So how much did Rachel have at first? That will be four, eight, twelve, sixteen. Sixteen units. So sixteen times five dollars. So Rachel must have eighty dollars at first. Yep. Okay. Okay, now let's go to question 26. Question 26, there's a typo error. Safe, uh, the word should be safe. Okay, so you will need to change the, the, you need to correct the word. Okay, now this one, okay, this one you need to pay attention now, this one, because it's a percentage problem and uh, it can be quite hard for some of you. Okay, so let's look at this. And save 40%, all right, 40% of her pocket money, okay? All right, so what is the percentage talking about? It's talking about what? It's talking about her pocket money, which is 100%. When her pocket money increased by 20%, her savings also increased by $12. So what was, what was Anne's pocket money before the increase? Now, if you don't know how to do, you can also think of model. How do you draw the model? This one call it the percentage model. This is the pocket money at first, and that is 100%. Okay, and she saved 40%. And when you use model, label, you, have, you still have to label. And how much did she spend? Then you must label this part. She will have spent 60%, all right? Even though the question never say she spent, right? The question never say she spent, right? But you can give your own label. Yeah, one well, rate, question one well, rate. Uh, can you scroll up to like show question 25, but you continue doing question? <laughs> Thanks. Okay, one ray. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Can can see? Can see? Okay. All right. Let's continue. So this is your percentage model. What is percentage model? Now a percentage model means you have a model, but there are percentage inside. Or you put percentage inside your model. We don't call it the percentage model. Okay. When her pocket money increased by twenty percent, so what happens to the rectangle? The rectangle will become longer. And before you can plus 20%, you must always start with 100% first, right? So what was the percentage now? The percentage now must be 100 plus 20. So now her pocket money is 120%. Am I correct? Okay, so this is now her, her pocket money, which is more. There's more pocket money. And her savings also increased by $12. Okay, and then you are stuck already. Okay, you are stuck. Okay, now, very easy. Listen carefully, very easy. Now, when your pocket money increased by 20%, whatever you do, whether you spend or whether you save, will also increase by 20%. Ah, once you understand that, everything becomes simple. Okay, one more time. If your pocket money increased by 20%, then whatever you do with your pocket money will also increase by 20%. So your savings will also increase by 20%. Your spending will also increase by 20%. And once you understand that, okay, we can continue already. So your savings will increase by 20%, right? So you always have to start with 100% before you can increase by another 20%. So this is the savings. The savings at first. The savings at first, okay? So can you find how much is, or how many percent is 120? Or how many is 120%? Right? So 100% is the 40, right? 100% is 40. Then 120% will be how much? So you jump, okay? You can jump, so you divide, or, uh, okay, let me, let me what, how, how can we jump? Let me see. So you can divide by, what can you divide? Uh, so you can divide by, uh, divide by what? Divide by 10, yeah, divide by 10. Yeah, divide by 10. And then 40 also divided by 10, uh, I got no space, uh, no space. So 40 divided by 10 will be 4. And then uh, 10, times, 10 times 12 is 1 to 0. And then the other side, you also times 12, that will be 48. So how many percent is your savings after your pocket money has increased? How many percent is your savings? It's now 48%. Okay. So can you find how much he spent also? How many percent did he spend? So if 48% is safe, 
then this one must be the span, which is how many percent? 120 minus 48. So what is 120 minus 48? You will get 72% now. Okay, so one more time. It's not say one more time, okay? If your pocket money increased by 20%, then everything you do will also increase by 20%. Okay, and that's how you get 48% in your savings. Okay, all right, so now you can compare already. Now the savings increased by $12, right? The savings increased by $12. So you look at this one and this one, and you find the increase. So what's the increase? There's an 8% increase. So the 8% increase is also $12. And there's no calculator. <laughs> okay, no calculator. So what do you do? Uh, jumping again, uh, jump, 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 okay? So can you find 100%, which is the money before the, which is the pocket money before the increase? So how do you find the pocket money before the increase, which is your 100%, right? Before the increase. Okay, do some jumping again, jumping. So you divide by... Uh, <laughs> Huh? Divide by 10, divide by four, four. divide by four, right? <laughs> divide by four, right? Why not find 1%? Because if you find 1%, you get decimal. There'll be a decimal, a lot of working. So the other side will be divided by four, which is $3. And then you times 20, uh, times uh, 50, right? Is it 50? Two times 50, you get 100%. And then the other side will be, uh, what's that? Three times 50, three times 50 will be $150. So what was her pocket money before the increase? The pocket money before the increase is $150. Okay, so this question is the one that is a little harder. Okay, it's a little harder. But how do you answer this question? How do you, how do you solve this problem? You just have to understand that if your money increased by 20% or 40%, then whatever you do, whether you spend money or save money, you will also increase by whatever percent. All right, if your money increased by 20%, then your savings and your spending also increase by 20%. Clear? Understand? Okay, any questions so far? Right, Yvette, Miss Nong can't see you. Huh? Miss Nong see the lamp, <laughs> the ceiling lights. Okay, let's go on to the next one. All right, let's go to next question. Okay, now, uh, the diagram shows a pattern that is made of identical squares and quadrants. What is the total shaded area? Now, if you, there are, again, there are a few ways to do this, but let's do the traditional way. All right, the, the normal way, which is to find the square area. One small square. Can we find one small square? So what's the area of one small square? Seven times seven, which is 49. And then I want to find the quadrant. What's the area of this quadrant, right? So I take one quarter. You have to put the one quarter in front and then times the formula, which is pi D, okay, pi D. And one quarter times pi and times diameter. Now quadrant has no diameter. Okay, one more time. Quadrant has no diameter. What you see is the radius. So how do you get the diameter? Just take the radius times two. Okay, just take the radius times two and you get the diameter. And no calculator, so you change the whole number into a fraction, then you cancel. <clears throat> Divide by two. You oh, get you're, finding that, Joe, you're finding circumference, not um, area. Find the total shaded area. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Why, why did we not find the circumference? Huh? Okay, thanks for telling me, right? <laughs> okay, we are finding the, to the area. Okay, now if anyone see a mistake, please tell me because Alistair is pointing out and the rest of you like, oh, <laughs> the rest of you is like just, just looking and looking. <laughs> okay, so finding area, yeah, Mr. Tong make a, <laughs> find the wrong, use the wrong formula. Okay, so what's the area of the quadrant? So one quarter times pi r square. Okay, so what's your pi? So your pi is 22 over seven. And what's the radius? Now the radius is seven, okay? Seven times seven. Okay, now without calculator, what do you do? Without calculator, you have to change the whole number into a fraction. And then what you do? Cancel, cancel. So you divide by two, put the answer there. Divide by two, put the answer there. Divide by seven, put the answer there. And divide by seven, put the answer there. So when you cancel, you only cancel two numbers at one time. Right, you only cancel two numbers at one time. All right, and once you cannot cancel anymore, right? 
Can you cancel anymore? Cannot already. Then you start to multiply. Okay, multiply the, multiply the numerators. So you have 11 times 7, that'll be 77. And then 2 times 1 times 1 times 1, that'll be 2. And then 77 divided by 2. All right, so do your division, right? I will skip the division so we can do a bit faster. And you divide by 2, you will get 38.5. That is the area of one quadrant. Okay, but how do you get the shader part, which is over here? To get the shader part, take away method. What's the take away method? You take the square area and you minus the quadrant. Okay, all right. So again, you do your working. So 49 minus 38.5, you will get 10.5, which is the area of one shaded. Mama, you, you, uh, that, that's the area of one small square. The whole square is 14 times 14. Oh, no, no, Misa is doing the, Misa is finding one small square first. Hang on okay. for a while first, okay? Misa is finding one small square. Then later you minus the quadrant to get the shaded corner. I'm doing the, Misa is using the, the traditional way. There's a faster way, but Mr. want to go through this traditional way so that everybody understand how to, how to do this normal way, like how to do this, because this is important to understand. All right, so you get one corner here, all right? Then you times four, okay? So you times four, why do you times four? Because there are four corners, okay? There are four shaded corners, understand? So you have to times four. Okay, so you take 10.5 and you times four and do your working and you will get 42. Okay, 42 centimeters square, which is the shaded area. Okay, so those of you who don't know your, I mean, if you cannot find a shortcut, you should be doing something like that. If you don't know how to do faster, then do this way, all right? Find one shaded part first, then it times four. But is there a faster way? Yeah, there's a faster way. Okay, so what is the fastest way? Okay, copy down already. Then I'll show you the faster way. All right, so in the exam, you will have to, Think about whether you can do faster. If not, then just do like that. Lah. Do like this. Okay, what is the fastest way? Okay, I'm going to erase the working on the left side. And uh, now, the shortcut is this. The shortcut is to play with the, play with the shapes. All right, okay. you have a square, a square, right? You just combine the quadrants together. The quadrants are identical. There's a method here. What is, what's the method? Is to combine the shapes, the identical shapes into something regular. So you combine all the quadrants into a circle. And then the corners will be the ones that are shaded. And all you have to do is just find the area of a square, which is a big square, and then minus the circle area. Two steps. Okay, this is a shortcut. All right, but again, yeah. I want miss. Yeah, at least don't know for what first, okay? Like what Mr. Don said, if you don't know the shortcut, then what do you do? Then you will need to go by the longer way, which is all right, nothing wrong with the longer way. Okay, clear so far? Yeah, Alistair? Yeah, Alistair, any question? Okay, then let's go on. Okay, question 28. Okay, question 28. And Mr. Sito has some oranges, apples, and mangoes. And 40% is talking about what? Talking about the fruits in the basket. Right, so the fruits in the basket must be 100%, right? And 40% were oranges. And the apples was two-third the mangoes. Okay, so, oops. so you will need to do some arrow pointing. Okay, hang on for a while. Okay, let me use the red color. So this fraction, you will need to do some arrow pointing. So what is two? Two will be the apples. And uh, what is three? Which is the mangoes. So what percentage of all the fruits was mangoes? Okay, what do you do? Now, if you are confused, right? Don't know how to do. Lesson here, change the percentage into fractions. Make the whole, fraction, uh, make the whole problem into fractions. So can I change the 40% into what? Into a fraction, which is two-fifths. <clears throat> okay, two-fifths. All right, now let me just erase everything uh, because, uh, okay, you don't have to erase so that you can see more clearly. Okay, I'm gonna erase everything. And, and then we are going to change the percentage into a fraction. And then we are going to do arrow pointing. So your 40% is two fifth. And this two fifth is talking about what? The fruits in the basket, right? And the apples is two third of the mangoes. So the apples is two and the mangoes is three. All right, now the problem becomes a fraction problem. You have two methods. Okay, you have two methods, what are the two methods? model method or ratio method. So you choose which method you want. So let's use the ratio method. All right, so how do you use the ratio method? 
So two-fifths of all the fruits, okay, were oranges. So label two. Okay, then where's your total? Your total must be five. Okay, when you use ratio method, you have to make sure that you have all the different kinds of fruits in your labels. Very important. Your ratio must have all the different kinds of fruits. And then the apples and mangoes will be three. Okay, all right, that's your fraction already, how you convert the ratio. And then the apples to mangoes, apples to mangoes, two is to three. And that is not a good ratio. Because why? Because it didn't have a total. <laughs> All right, you need to have a total in your ratios, so that'll be five. Okay, so once you have done that, what do you do? Look at the two ratios, compare. Compare what? Compare the same kind. Can you see the apples and mangoes is three units, and the apples and mangoes here is five units, so they are not equal. So you will need to make them equal. Okay, ratio method. So the entire ratio, you have to times five, and then you times five, and then this ratio, you have to times three, and then times three. And then what will happen? Then you will get a new ratio, which is 10 is to 15 is to 25. And then you will have uh, 6 is to 9 is to 15. So once you make the apples and mangoes equal, then you can call them the same units. All of them will be called units. Understand? OK, but before that, before you make them equal, what, you, what do you call them? You call them units and parts. Okay, parts, units and parts ratio. There are two different ratios, so they are not the same. But once you make them equal, they are the same already. And you can ignore, ignore the old ratio. Okay, ignore the old ratio and look at the new ratios. So what percentage of all the fruits? So what do you do? Change this one to what fraction? Remember? Remember before you get your percentage? Right as a fraction first. So what fraction of all the fruits? which is 25 units, were mangoes. So mangoes is nine, nine units. You got your fraction already. Then how do you get your percentage? You just have to times four to get 100. And then nine times four is 36. And once your denominator is 100, then 36%. Understand? OK, so once there's a, if there's a percentage in your problem, what do you do? You change it to a fraction. And then you have a fraction problem, and then you have two methods to choose. You have ratio method or model method. So in this problem, I use ratio method. Understand? Okay. All right. Let's go on to two more questions. We are two more questions, and we are done. Okay. Question twenty nine. Okay. Now, AB is parallel to CD. <laughs> yeah. <Hello. So, laughs> who is still writing? <laughs> Somebody is still writing. Okay. Okay. Let me not go back a bit. Okay. All right. You can copy down quickly. Okay, then. Okay, let's go on. Okay, question 39. Okay, question 39. Uh, okay, where are we? Okay, uh, Mr. Khan change the screen. Hang on for a while. Okay, yeah, so AB is parallel to CD. Okay, look for what? Look for Z. Uh, you can also look for F. Okay, so when you see two lines parallel, look for Z. And sometimes you may even see a F. Okay, sometimes. All right. Okay, Karina, question. Yeah, Karina, you raise your hand. Um, teacher. Mm, yes. Can I, can I leave first because I haven't done my school homework yet. Okay, yeah, you can, you can. There are no worries. You can go. All right. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so what? Where is uh, uh, x z is equal to y z. So x z, which is over here, y z is over here. So that is your isosceles triangle, right? So this triangle is isosceles. Okay, so this angle and this angle must be the same. All right, so what is angle X, Y, Z? So X, Y, Z, you're supposed to find this angle. Okay, how to find? Very easy. There is a Z. Can you see a Z? So this is 98. Uh, this is also 98. Then you just take 180 and you minus 98 and you will get uh, 82 degrees. Okay, and then you have to divide by two. So 82 degrees divided by two, you get 41 degrees. So this is 41. And that is also 41 degrees. OK? All right, so your angle is 41 degrees. Clear so far? 
All right, so how do you know which two angles are equal in the isosceles triangle? Listen carefully, there are two sides that are equal. So you put your finger or put your pencil here, trace the pencil to the end of the side that's equal, and the angle at the end of this side, right, will be the same as the angle at the end of the other equal side. So these two angles at the end of the two sides that are equal are the same. Okay, that's how you don't get confused, right? To know which two angles are the same. Okay, great. last question, right? Question 30. Now, question 30 is usually, okay, usually the hardest, usually, but not all the time. So Mrs. Tan bought a 100 kg set of flour at $150. She repacked the flour into smaller packets. The mass of one smaller packet was 350 kg. And then she sold all the smaller packets at $2 each. So after repacking, there were more than 100 packets. Is that true? So you will have to do what? You have to prove it. You take 100 kg, right? And one small packet is 3 over 5 kg. Then you have to divide. OK, you must divide to get how many packets. All right, and uh, the moment you change into what? Uh, you change into grams. Ah, that's right, it gets hard already. <laughs> if you change the 100 kg into 100,000 grams, it becomes very hard to do already. So you should just leave it in kilogram and then change the whole number into a fraction and then keep change and flip. Okay, all right. And then what do you get? You will get 500 divided by three and then you must do your working. So 500 divided by three. So you do your long division and uh, six times three is 18. And, uh, and then you have six times three, 18 again, and st stop there. Okay, stop there because you're going to write as a fraction. So what's your fraction? 166 and two third. So how do you know how many packets are there? How do you know? You just have to look at the whole number, which is the, which is what? Which is the 166 packets. The whole number is the how many packets. So is it true that there were more than 100 smaller packets? True, right? Okay, and, uh, and those of you who, second statement, those of you who put down true also, especially in my group, if you put down the answer, you still haven't learned your lesson yet. <laughs> okay, what is the remainder? The what is the leftover? The leftover is not two third. Okay, the leftover is not two third. The leftover is something else. And how do you get the, <laughs> how do you get the leftover? You take the two third shortcut, shortcut, take the two third and multiply by what is one small packet? What is one small packet? Shortcut to get the leftover. So you cancel, divide by three, and divide by three, and two times one is two, one times five is five, and the leftover is this. This is the leftover. So it's not true, huh? it's false. So those of you who get it wrong, you still haven't learned your lesson yet. <laughs> okay, still got time to, to learn. All right, once the exam comes, then hopefully you don't make the same mistake. Okay, this is how you get the leftover. Okay, Mrs. Tan collected more money than what she spent. All right, if there are 166 packets, how much did she collect? Times $2, right? So she will collect, you take 166 times two, which is definitely more than $150 already, right? So she will have collected $332, which is more than how much she spent, right? So she must have earned more money, right? She collected more money than what she spent. True. Okay, are you clear so far? All right, so this paper is quite a good paper. It's quite a very good paper that I think uh, not very hard, but also not very easy. There are questions here that are really testing you on, on your basic and also your methods. So, okay, hope you have done well for this paper. Any questions? Anyone who has any questions, you can stay back. All right, stay back after the lesson. All right, anyone has questions? All right, now just to let you know that next week there'll be no, uh, no paper one session. So we will continue two weeks later. All right, next week we will take a break. Okay, if there's no questions, then those who want to stay back, you can stay behind. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. All right, you can have a good rest. All right, see you next week. All right, see you two weeks later. All right, two weeks later. All right, goodbye. Anybody who wants, who wants to stay behind, you can stay behind. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> okay, questions? Jordan? Questions? Yeah, when ready? Saturday got lesson. Of course. <laughs> yeah, one way, of course, got lesson. Uh, unless it's a public holiday, right? If it's a public holiday, then uh no then no lesson. Okay, otherwise only on Monday.
uh, yeah, Monday is a no, no paper one lesson. Monday, only, only for Monday. Okay, all right, Jared. Okay, Jared, Aiden, all right. Okay, if there's no question, then I will see you on the next two weeks later. Okay, goodbye, Jared, goodbye. Jared, got a question, Jared? No questions, how about Aiden? Aiden, no questions. Okay, then I'll see you the next two weeks later. Okay, all right, <laughs> you're still around. <laughs> okay, see you, goodbye. Right, we can all go and sleep already. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, Mr. So end the meeting already, huh? Bye -bye. Okay. Okay. Goodbye. Bye bye. 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 Bye b